Welcome to Pulse episode 49. In this episode we're going to take a look at quite a lot of Blizzard Entertainment news and just as much Diablo news too. In the Diablo news we'll talk about the chance of seeing Diablo 3 in 2011, the Facebook like campaign, the male demon hunter who is apparently ready to go and quite a few other interesting pieces of news. So let's get to it. As I said we're starting with the general Blizzard news first. So with Blizzard's 20 year anniversary site up and running, we were promised some content. And well, speaking of content, their first unlockable, I guess we can call it, is a special video message from Blizzard co-founders Mike Morham and Frank Pierce thanking Blizzard fans for their support and dedication over the past two decades. As I mentioned, there's obviously a lot more to come. Interviews, a Blizzard timeline, a look at the developers, fan community, and perhaps even a few game announcements? Hey, it's better to hope for the best. You can find a transcription of the entire video below, along with the link to the full thing on the anniversary site. Enjoy. At the DICE Summit in Las Vegas, Mike Moraham of Blizzard Entertainment was asked about a certain unannounced project that our dear Blizzard Entertainment has been working on for quite a number of years. He did answer the question, and that alone is something. He spoke about the game in very broad terms, though, but as you can imagine, even that is more than enough to get the rumor mill turning once again. Without giving away any details, we have some of our most experienced MMO developers who spent years working on World of Warcraft, working on this project, Morham said. We're trying to leverage all the lessons we learned through the years, some of which we were able to address in World of Warcraft and others that maybe because of the design decisions we've made, you just can't address. So we're kind of taking a step back with all that knowledge to make something that's completely new and fresh. We're not trying to make a WoW sequel, he explained. I guess we did sort of know this before, though, as they did tell us that the two titles were meant to coexist in the future. He also spent some time talking about all the social aspects of today's MMOs, and what we can expect from games in the future. As expected, specific details were nowhere to be found, but Morham did hint that Blizzard sees those social aspects as defining characteristics for the future of gaming. Interesting indeed. No doubt the most profound line from the entire thing has to be the following. To break the mold, sometimes you have to start over. Never a dull moment with Blizzard Entertainment. With BlizzCon 2010 freshly announced, Blizzard's 20 year anniversary, and all the other interesting stuff going on with the rest of the Blizzard games, there's definitely enough excitement for everyone. If you're keen for more details about this as of yet unannounced MMO, you can read all about Mike Morham and his presence at the DICE Summit below. Enjoy and happy speculating. Activision Blizzard announced its latest financial numbers for its last fiscal quarter that ended on December 31st, 2010. The revenues came in at over 1.4 billion for the quarter, slightly below the company's 1.5 billion for the same period a year ago. Apparently, for the entire 2010 calendar, the publisher brought in 4.45 billion in revenue, which is a ton of money, and slightly better than the 4.28 that it brought in back in 2009. These are, however, just boring numbers that we probably don't care much for. In the same press release though, it was announced that Activision Blizzard were canning a few games and planning on announcing a new franchise that it claims will bring the world of toys, video games and internet together in an unprecedented way. Yeah, the chances are that that is not a Blizzard game at all, but hey, I thought I'd just mention it here anyway. Read the full thing below. In some better news for us Blizzard fans, well, you could take this as better or a lot worse, I guess. Blizzard have announced that should they not release a new title in 2011, we can expect a minimum of two new titles from them in 2012. They don't plan on releasing a game in 2011? Wait, that may well be bad news instead of good news. I take that first part back. But there's more to the story. I'm just being a little bit dramatic here. What got it all started was the Activision COO, Thomas Tipple, saying the following. Because Blizzard Entertainment has not yet confirmed the launch date for its next global release, our outlook at this time does not include a new game from Blizzard in 2011. So if you ask me, this is just Activision not taking any risks. I don't blame them, they obviously don't want to put faith in anything that's not certain yet. It does make sense. Blizzard President Mike Morham joined the call after Tipple spoke and promised that more information was coming about Diablo 3 and StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm. He said that Blizzard's developers are hard at work on Heart of the Swarm and will hear more in the coming months. Additionally, and more interestingly, Morham said that he would talk about Diablo 3 and the upcoming beta on the next call. That's in about three months. 
He said that until Blizzard and Diablo 3 get to beta and the community have a chance to help and test the game, they're not going to lock in any release dates. In some ways, that is good for Diablo 3 fans, but three months is quite long, so you better start counting the days. Mike Morham finished by saying that the games that they currently have in the pipeline represent the best and widest slate of games that they have ever produced. That does sound quite good if you ask me. So if you want to read all about what to expect from the next two years or three months with Blizzard Entertainment, check the posts link below. So that's it, let's head on over to the Diablo news. Okay, so let me first just say that there have been quite a few stories popping up about Diablo 3's release over the past couple of days, and whether it's coming this year or not. So what it basically comes down to is that Blizzard want to release a game this year, sure, they really do, but they won't if it's not finished. We all know the way of Blizzard, how they do things, how they make their games, and the amount of work that goes into making them pretty much perfect at launch. So firstly, what do we have to lead us to believe that we won't be seeing it this year? So Bashok replied to all the rumors and speculation regarding what was said during the investors conference call last week. He said, as I will keep saying, that the quote that spread across the internet like wildfire was very much and very widely misunderstood. Blizzard has not announced any releases for the year of 2011 and that doesn't mean that we won't see any. All that it means is that they are not going to announce a game which they are not certain they will be able to deliver on time. Blizzard and or Activision can't just go out there and tell their investors that they might release a game or that there's a chance of it being released and then nothing comes. So the most important part of what Bashiok said is probably the fact that Blizzard are happy with the progress of Diablo 3 right now. Also, Blizzard are, as you will hear in just a second, trying to contain this situation and make sure people don't go totally crazy because nothing has been announced yet. Bashiok said the following, I want to make sure it's clear that what was stated during the investor conference call was this. Blizzard has not announced a release date for its next global release. If we don't release a major title in 2011, then, for planning purposes, we would expect to launch two titles in 2012. This has been misreported and misinterpreted as an announced release schedule for 2011 and 2012, which it is not. While we're pleased with the progress of Diablo 3, we have not announced a release date for it or for any other upcoming Blizzard game. We're currently contacting a number of outlets to request that they make the appropriate corrections in order to avoid any further confusion. So, as we hear, if it were to happen that their games were delayed, we would be seeing a minimum of two in 2012. Moving on. The next piece of information tells us that Blizzard does in fact want to release Diablo 3 by the end of the year. The next piece of information tells us that Blizzard does in fact want to release Diablo 3 by the end of the year. When asked by Kotaku at the Interactive Arts and Sciences Awards about the progress of Diablo 3 and whether we would in fact see it this year, Blizzard co-founder and president Mike Morham had the following to say. We really, really hope so. That's our goal. Our goal is to get there, but you know, at the end of the day, we're going to get it right. That's more important. We're going to promise we're going to get it out there when it's awesome, and we're crossing our fingers that maybe it'll be this year. Now that's the kind of quotes I want to see. Straight from Blizzard themselves, not through Activision during a conference call that was aimed at investors and not the general public. The last part of information that I wanted to look at regarding this was the following quote that was actually made right at the end of the conference call last week. Mike Moriam had this to say which saddened me but at the same time does shine a little hope on our Diablo 3 in 2011 plight. I did talk about this before but the quote reads as follows. D3 development continues to go well and we're very excited about the game. I'm looking forward to sharing more news about the game and our upcoming beta during the next conference call. Yes, I know, I said it during the Blizzard news, but I wanted to say it again. Why is it sad? Well, the next conference call is only set to happen in early May and that is a good few months off. If we only get to hear about the beta then, well, once the beta starts, and assuming it does close to that time, the game release is probably around 6 months off from that date. That means, well, we might see the game out in November or December of 2011 if we're lucky. But as I said, any beta news is good news. So the question remains, I guess, will we see Diablo 3 in 2011? 
Blizzard seemed to want it done, and, well, I think looking at all the information we have, it looks like we are nearing the release of the beta anyway, so I will go ahead and say that I am quite confident that we will. Below you can find a horde of links that will tell you all about the release date drama from a great many different people. There are a lot of opinions out there right now, but sadly not that much solid information. Check them out, read through the facts, and decide for yourself. I will keep my hopes up and keep believing that I may well be playing Diablo 3 before 2012. As an extra, or rather just a little addition, a few threads were started up over on the Battle.net forums and I guess I'll call these rage threads. Quite a few fans were disappointed and angered at quite a few things. Some blaming the engine used for Diablo 3 for delaying the game's release. Others just complaining that Blizzard are taking too long to announce the Diablo 3 beta. There's a ton of rage and even more hostility. I don't really like it very much, I can tell you that. I really think that, as usual, we should trust Blizzard because they do know what they're doing and they are probably doing things in the best possible way. As I warned, things get a bit nasty and I really can't believe how far some people go. If you're interested in all the slander and badmouthing Bashiok had to take and all his responses to it, check the post I've linked below. The Warcraft Facebook page recently hit 1 million likes and apparently rubbed it in the Diablo fans' faces. As we all know, there are most definitely millions of Diablo fans out there. Hell, I think most of those that like the Warcraft page are probably Diablo fans too. So to take the fight back, Blizzard have some incentives lined up for us. Beginning at 550,000 likes on the Diablo Facebook page, they will post new art and screenshots, and for every 25,000 additional likes they receive after that, up to 1 million. Well, that is a ton of potential visual stimulation for us. The Diablo Facebook page is currently sitting at around 570,000 likes, and yes, that means that the first batch of art and screenshots were in fact released, and you've probably been staring at them while listening to this. We were also given a few extra details about what we can expect for every 25,000 likes. Bashiok said that mostly we'll be receiving one piece of art and one screenshot, two to three new pieces per update. All of that is amazing news and I absolutely can't wait to see more of this most anticipated of games. So you've seen all the new art, but there were a few others that weren't actually new, they were released during BlizzCon 2010 and just re-released now. But hey, that is fine by me. So head on over to the Diablo Facebook page, give it a like and check the new art out. Enjoy. At Diablo has given us a little update that many have been waiting for for quite a few weeks. The male demon hunter's repairs have been completed and the class is pretty much good to go. A fan asked whether we'll be waiting another week so he can get a pedicure or a fruit parfait. The answer to that, which was quite entertaining, was the following. He has this whole American Psycho self-care regiment. It takes a while. So yes, we know progress has been made and that the class is looking good. Still though. No word on when we'll be seeing the class revealed, and obviously no word on what we'll be seeing when said reveal is... um... revealed. Is it possible that we'll unlock the male demon hunter via the new Facebook like campaign? Very much so, and even more reason to get liking and keep those rewards coming. You can see the full interactions below and keep checking back here for more. Yet more crazy cool fan art. This week Diablo INC Gamers and their fan art watch have a look at everything from assassins to necromancers. There are quite a few amazingly well done pieces here as usual and they are definitely worth checking out. Also see my favorite of the lot on your screen right now, Bloody Assassin by Photon Ike. Enjoy. You can also check out a couple of really cool wallpapers in the latest weekly wallpaper watch over at Diablo INC Gamers. The most notable of which is probably the female Demon Hunter one. At Diablo answered yet another question a few days ago regarding runes and how they affect movement skills. They tell us that one rune actually makes teleport an offensive spell, allowing it to deal damage where you land. Another makes your Witch Doctor's Spirit Walk apply dots to those you walk through. And lastly, one for the Barbarian's Charge that either increases speed or leaves a trail that damages enemies. I wonder how other skills would be affected, as this rune and skill system seems to be quite deep indeed. And I can't wait to give it a try. Read more about the runes and their effects below. Bashiok shared some technical information about how the calculations for hitting and being hit have been changed in Diablo 3. A few big changes were made from Diablo 1 and 2, good ones, I think. In the first two games, high defense meant enemies had a lower chance to hit you. 
but in Diablo 3, the defense system is based not on hit avoidance, but on damage reduction. A lot like resistances worked in Diablo 2. So that means heavy armor and high defense doesn't mean you won't be hit, it means you'll take less damage when you are hit. On a side note, Diablo INC gamers explain that shields in Diablo 3 are also rated on how much they can absorb, rather than the ability to vanish 100% of the damage they block, as was the case in Diablo 2. Very interesting. Definitely some information you'll want to remember when kitting out your characters one day. Read more below. Let's check the Diablo 3 smalls out. You can read a Diablo PvP preview called Devil vs Devil over at G4 TV. Bill Roper has a talk about Hellgate London's hellish demise. And yes, that's not Diablo news, but I thought I'd put it here anyway because it's actually related. Max Schaefer has a talk to IRB Gamers about Torchlight. And the next couple, courtesy of Diablo INC Gamers, are the Dark Library issue 29. They have a wiki watch up covering attributes, the Diablo 3 team, and skills. Next up, you can read what Blizzard community managers do when they do what they do. The Diablo 3 cinematic introduction has been rescored. You can check that out below or in the link that's on your screen right now. Diablo fans has a post up called the death of your followers and attack rating, which actually just covers the fact that NPCs and your hired mercenaries can actually take damage from you. Lastly, unlock Diablo 2 with the Hell Unleashed mod. That's also courtesy of Diablo fans. There are, as usual, a couple of interesting and today quite entertaining questions and answers. Let's check them out. Excluding the talisman slash charms and items, how will we be able to affect our character's stats and attributes? Traits are another big one, otherwise the only other way would be temporary increases from buffs and such. How many followers do you need to reach before you release the game? This was in response to the Diablo Facebook like campaign. We're still working on the system that directly connects Facebook likes to the completion of the game. In Diablo 3, will critical hits be displayed as numbers, like WOW? We have options to show some combat text such as critical hits if you like. Sadly, that's all the smalls I have and all the Diablo 3 news I have for you today. Keep checking back here soon for more Diablo, Warcraft and Starcraft news and remember, like it, favorite it, share it with your friends and subscribe. But for now, happy Facebook liking.